Hello again, and today we are talking, I'm teaching on systems thinking. Systems thinking, okay? You might want to take notes, systems, S-Y-S-T-E-M-S, -S -E thinking. Now, let me explain. Do you remember uh, a week or two ago, uh, whenever I gave you the uh, cash flow quadrant, and I, and I had E for employees, S for self-employed, and then on the other side of the quadrant, I had B for business owner and then I for investor. Do you remember that? Okay. And I said the difference between employed or self-employed and being over in the business category, the business owner, was that business owners have a system that works so they don't have to. Now they do work, but they don't have, it's not just their work. They don't get paid dependent upon solely their efforts. And self-employed people get paid solely upon their efforts. An attorney can only bill out hours that he actually works on a client's case. Dentist, you can only pay your dentist or your doctor if you actually go to a visit. The doctor does not charge you because, you know, uh, if you don't go to see him. Uh, so it's time is trading for money. And so, but the business owners have a system that works so they don't have to. So I'm going to talk to you about that kind of a system today. And I want you to change the way and shift the way you're thinking about your business. Most business owners think, uh, most people, entrepreneurs, do not think with systems thinking. They really don't. It's a rare skill uh, for people to think systematically. But I can tell you it's one of the greatest skills in the world, and there are very few who are good at thinking this way. Uh, the, one of the greatest systems thinkers of, of all time uh, at least of the last 500 years, uh, he actually helped governments create systems. If you think about it, there, there is a transportation system in nearly every country in the United States of America. There's highways, there's infrastructure, there's bridges, um, and it transcends each state, okay? It's not just a state matter, it's, uh, it, it's a national uh, uh, system. And then you have international systems. Uh, the various countries in Africa each have their own protocol. You have your own systems, but then each system is part of a broader system. Does that make sense? Like, let me give you this illustration. In each of your homes, you have a system. You have a system of what time uh, the, you and your family members traditionally wake up. You probably have a morning routine you have a little system at home. You know when the laundry is going to be washed. You know when the dishes are going to be cleaned. You know when meal times are going to be served. Okay, so you get this rhythm. You get a system uh, of how your home is going to operate. Okay, but your home is part of a broader system, which might be where you work. Where you work says you have to be here at this time and stay to this time. The market is only open at this time and closes at this time. You can't sell eggs at 2 a.m. in the morning. Why? Because that's not the system that you have to, can operate in. There are systems at work that control and dictate and determine uh, how you have to operate. Okay? So what the most successful entrepreneurs are those who learn how to operate, how to create a system that plays well with all of the other systems in society, okay? It's, it's you've got to create a system for your business that, that flows naturally and works well and seamlessly with other systems in society, all right? So let me give several illustrations to that. Um, first of all, governments, I said, have systems, especially as it relates to transportation. There's healthcare systems. Uh, there are business systems of uh, how countries can uh, grow their GDP, how they can promote economic development. Uh, there are programs and systems in place for doing that. And then on the private side, the private sector, uh, you have businesses. Uh, most of you have probably heard of McDonald's. McDonald's is the largest uh, uh, fast food restaurant in the world. Uh, I think it's something like over 70,000 locations or, or what have you. It's, it's very large. It's the largest. And, uh, uh, but they, what makes them so good? What makes them, it's not because they make a good hamburger. Their product 
is not very good, right? Most people can make a better hamburger at home. So why is McDonald's so successful? It's because they have a system. They have a system. Their system is so precise that they know exactly how many seeds go on top of their hamburger bun. They don't just sprinkle onions on your hamburger when you order a hamburger. They don't just, uh, so sometimes it has more onions and sometimes it has less onions. No, they know exactly how, how many onions are on there and where they are. It looks like they just take a spoon and slap some ketchup on it. That's not the case. They know exactly how much ketchup was on there and exactly the swirl, the way it goes on and is applied because they know where, no matter where you bite in that hamburger, when you're going to experience and taste what. My friends, that is a system. When you know the state of your flocks, as, as the Bible tells us to do, know the state of your flocks, know your business inside and out. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned in corporate America, I remember one day I, I was tasked with this spreadsheet uh, and it was a critical spreadsheet. Uh, it, we, got, we made business decisions, $100 million business decisions based on the information on this one Excel, spree, Excel spreadsheet that I was in charge of. But the problem is it had thousands of formulas in it uh, or thousands of filled and hundreds of formulas in numerous pages. So it was a very complex Excel workbook. And I remember uh, the senior vice president asked me one day about a random number somewhere in one of the pages. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't know the number. And I said, you know, I'm going to have to check. And he said, why would you have to check that number? How do you not know that? That's one of the most critical numbers that drives our business. You should know that off the top of your head. You should know our business, know it inside and out, memorize it. And I thought, well, I don't have the capacity to memorize all of this. And, you know, I wanted to give excuses and this and that. And I felt pretty bad about it. But I ended up learning that spreadsheet. And I thought, my goodness, this is not just a spreadsheet. I need to know this. I need to eat and breathe and sleep this spreadsheet. In essence, or in other words, I needed to know the state of my flocks. I needed to know how many. I needed to know which ones were hungry, which ones were not feeling well that day. I need, you need to know every little detail about your business. Now, systems are important. I want to even 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 scripture uh, in First Corinthians 14, 40 says, let all things be done decently and in order. Did you know that most entrepreneurs do not do it? They don't do very many things decently and in order. They don't. But we're commanded to. Isn't that interesting? It's like we think that just uh, only parts of our lives have to be decent and in order. But your business ought to be decent and in order. Well, you know what that is? That's systems thinking. That is that is creating systems in your life. Do you know what the benefit of creating systems in your business will be? It means that you will be successful by default. You'll be successful because you did work to what your calendar told you to do, not based on your feelings that day. See, it doesn't matter if you felt like waking up this morning. It doesn't matter what you had to do today. It doesn't matter uh, based on what's, what's going well and what's not going well. We're not a servant to our feelings. You become, with a system, you become faithful and a servant to, to the process. Okay, so systems thinking requires you to implement processes. It requires you to implement processes that you follow and that your employees follow, your friends, your staff, whatever it is, they must follow these things, the processes. So then the next step in creating the right systems is to make sure you have the right processes. Because if you have the wrong system and the wrong processes, you're gonna get the wrong results. So it's not a matter of just automating something or putting in a system. Because if it's the wrong one, it's, you're going to go the wrong direction and get hurt by it. You're not going to be blessed and, and make money and, and increase your revenues from it. Okay, so you must be uh, think about systems thinking. You, and to put in systems, you're creating processes. Uh, process uh, evaluation and process improvement is critical. And let me tell you the biggest mistake most people make when it comes to creating processes. I've gone into numerous uh, com companies and countries where I would evaluate, why are you doing it this way? Why, why do you do this? 
And you know what you'll find out almost inevitably, I don't know that there's ever been an exception, but when there's a clunky system, a system that doesn't work very well, in every case, I can trace it back to where the system, people created processes because there was a weak link in the system. Okay, so let's, pre let's, let's uh, uh, pretend like I have a business that has 100 employees. OK, and we have this one employee that just she's not very, you know, they're not very good at their job. They, 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 they can't uh, figure it out or they're not able to keep up the production schedule. And so we have to create this workaround process so that because they're a good person, we want to keep them on the staff, but we've got to create a workaround because they're not really effective at their job, okay? That happens in everywhere, that happens everywhere. Well, what happens is 100 years or 10 years from now even, uh, anytime a new CEO comes in and, or they do process evaluations and you find out, why are we doing it this way? Why do we have so much staff in this one area? And you realize it's because you know 50 years ago, there was this person here who was incompetent that uh, we had to work around. It's not that we do these things because it makes sense. We do these things because we were compensating for an incompetent person. And in every situation, like in government, for example, we will say, why does the road go here instead of going there? Why, we had to build an extra you know, 1,000 miles of road just to get here. Why did we have to do that instead of going the 10 miles direct? Well, because there might've been a disgruntled uh, commissioner, a disgruntled governor, uh, a, a, an adversarial president or presence or tribe that, that prevented that. So systems, a lot of times, they go around, uh, people create processes which turn into systems that are work around, to work around dysfunction. And that does work in the short term, but in the long term, it breeds dysfunction at a tremendous level, okay? So uh, systems thinking, you need to be thinking about uh, systems thinking. What are the systems in your business? What are the processes in your business? Uh, when, when I owned a string of coffee shops in the Northwest of the United States, uh, we had a menu, a set menu, and then we had different drinks uh, and beverages and coffee and smoothie uh, type uh, recipes. And we had the exact amount of things per item so that there was never any guessing. We never said, do use a pinch of this and a, a, a hint of that. No, we were precise because just like McDonald's, if you have a McDonald's hamburger in Orlando, Florida, United States, it tastes the same as the hamburger that I had in Beijing, China. Do you see? It doesn't matter where I am in the world. McDonald's tastes like McDonald's. It doesn't matter that it's a 16-year-old person who, who can't even make their bed in the morning making the hamburger because there's a system that's doing it, not just them. So once you have that system, the components of that system may be technology, it may be machines, and it's probably going to include people. So you have all kinds of components. There's always parts to a system. And those parts have to work together in order to create the finished product, the finished result. But a right system allows you to plug and play parts, which means if I have an employee that does this, serves this function in my system, in my business, and that person resigns or they leave or they pass away or they go on to a different job, it should not crash my system because the system is not built around a person they are a part of that system, which means I can find someone else that as long as they have the right attitude and the right spirit, I can plug a person in that part. Uh, so I want to explain parts to a system. Though you have the different parts, think about like an automobile, okay? Think about like a vehicle. Uh, this was one of the difficult lessons I learned as an executive running companies was I used to think that if I got the very best staff, that we would have the best company. I, I, I was running companies like I was a coach in the NBA or the NFL 
or, you know, uh, a coach of a MLS, a sports team. But companies are different than sports teams, you know, and, and even sports teams are, are similar in this sense. You, you can't get a team of superstars, the very best person in each role on a team. You know why? The Dallas Cowboys have tried that for years and they still haven't seen a Super Bowl. You know why? Because of usually the different egos that come with being the best at each of these areas. So it's not the problem is not the lack of skill. The problem is that the parts don't work together. So back to the automobile illustration. Imagine if you and I were going to build an automobile. We said we're going to start a car company. We're going to our car is going to we're going to take the very best chassis that's in the world today. Then we're going to uh, only use the very best alternator in the world. Maybe that's from a Bentley and maybe the best chassis in the world is Toyota. And then we're going to use the best car body in the world. Maybe that's Rolls Royce. And then we're going to use the best carburetor. And, the, uh, and then we're going to use the best, uh, the technology from BMW because they're the most advanced. And we're going to use the, the seats from Mercedes Benz because they're durable and they're comfortable. We're going to use the suspension from Range Rover because they can go all terrain. And we put together our car using the very best parts of a vehicle in the world today. Let me ask you a question. Will the vehicle go? Would the vehicle work? Well, the answer is absolutely not. Well, why not? Because the parts weren't made to work together. If you have a, a 2010 Toyota Land Rover, or Land, uh, Rover you aren't going to be able to put a Mercedes tire on that. You're not going to be able to interchange that with a General Motors or a Ford uh, a motor, right? You, it's because these parts have to work together. When your vehicle breaks down, they have to find, somehow get that correct part. Sometimes they get the wrong part. And what happens when they get the wrong part? The system doesn't work. The, the, the engine doesn't start. Your car doesn't move. And that's because there are systems. Now, I cannot teach you on systems without explaining the two types of systems. There are open systems and there are closed systems. Closed systems and open systems. There are systems that are part of an ecosystem. So for example, Roland College is kind of a blend. Roland College is open to people to enroll during a certain enrollment period. And then, so we're an open system for a period of time where you can participate in the system. But once the semester starts, it is a closed system, which means it is just us. We operate now within this framework, within this parameter. We have weekly classes. You have assignments during the week to upload pictures of your business, to post status updates so we know what's happening in your business. So we can give feedback and encouragement and direction on how you can grow your business. See, that is a system. And with all systems, there's closed systems and open systems. Government, by and large, is an open system. Uh, uh, that we, It's a system that we all participate in because we usually, we, 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 we are involved in society. If you're walking from one village to the market, from your village to the marketplace, uh, you're, you're a part of a system because you're probably traveling the same trails that, that everyone else does, uh, the same paths that everyone else does. That's still a system. How you get from point A to point B is a system that somebody created at some point. My question to our kingdom entrepreneurs today is what systems are you creating? What, what system do you have at home? Is it intentional or is it accidental? I do not believe in accidental systems. In fact, just know this. Accidental systems are disaster systems. If you don't build your systems intentionally, then I promise you, you've got a bad system. Most people have bad lives. You know why? Because they live it unintentionally. You have to be intentional about who your friends are. You have to be intentional about who you take phone calls from. You have to be intentional about who you talk to, intentional about who you respond. Every barking dog does not require your attention. I, I like to tell those around me, uh, a moving train doesn't stop for every barking dog. 
We'll never get where we're going if we do. Everyone's going to have something to say about what we're doing and about how we're doing it, but that's, that doesn't matter. That's not, a, that, that's not uh, important to your business. So what is your system at home? What is the system that you create? What system do you create in your business? How intentional is everything you do? How you acquire product? How you brand yourself in your company? The quality of your service or your products? Every step along the way, is your system intentional? And let me say this about systems. They must be duplicatable and scalable. When I was talking about the different parts to a system, they need to be interchangeable. The best systems don't rely, or rely on one particular skill set. The best systems. Doesn't mean you can't build a great company where there's some vulnerability here or there with a system where it's just because I got this person and they know how to build nuclear weapons. Uh, and so because they have this unique, special skill set, they become valuable to the team. We work on a lot of artificial intelligence, the things that I create in my head uh, and products and, and so forth for national security purposes. Well, that is very specific. Some of the things I do in advising national governments is very specific. There's not very many of, of us on the planet who do what I do. There might be three or four others that are kind of in that same you know, niche, uh, I, I don't think they are believers. And so I don't think they have wisdom because wisdom, the Bible says, Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't begin to be a wise person if you don't hate evil, because he says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate, saith the Lord. So you, anything that comes out of your mouth, any counsel against the Lord is not wise. It's not counsel at all. See, so so there are two aspects to this. There's the aspect of make, make yourself so valuable that, uh, that, you, that this rule doesn't apply to you personally, but then create systems so that you don't buck the system, the, the, the system of systems, okay? Uh, that's what I was saying is create systems that play well with other systems. If I create a system that requires the transportation system to build new interstates and highways, that's probably not a good business, wouldn't you say? That's, that's not a good way to go because it's not going to happen and it's not going to happen anytime soon or it's not going to happen in my lifetime. So that's not a good strategy. It's not a good strategy at all. So uh, with that, I, I hope that the systems thinking, uh, I want to shift your thinking towards systems thinking, process thinking. And do I have a closed system or an open system? Uh, what inputs or parts and components do I have into my system? I even can take the system down to myself. If I am a system, and by the way, God created us as system beings, did he not? We're, we're body, soul, and spirit. Can you imagine if my right arm did not want to work with my left arm? Or, or my or the funnier part would be if my right leg did not want to work with my left leg. I'd start walking this way. Uh, in my right leg, and then my left leg wants to go this way, and then what would happen? Whoop! I'd be doing a split, and I wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> but our body is a closed system, right? It's self-contained. Now, there, like with any closed system, there are outside pressures and influences. What I eat, what I put into my system, we even call it a digestive system, don't we? We even use that word. So when you put things into your body, uh, you are putting things into the system that can either help the system or have an adverse effect on the system. Same thing with every system you have. Things we put in our mind, things we watch on TV, things we read, people we listen to. So, so our ear is a, 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 an access point for systems for our system for input into our system our eye is another way we get input into our system right our eyes through what we see and through what we read and through what we hear so it's through our mouth what we eat what we drink is all input into our system and in the in that in, those inputs are what can determines if your system works smoothly or whether it does not and friends let me tell you kingdom entrepreneurs what you put into your system, 
the people, the products, the services, the ingredients, almost like baking a cake, the ingredients you put into your system is either going to enhance your system or destroy your system. It's either going to cost you money or it's going to make you money. So what you need to do is sit down and you need to think through your business and you need to think through what are the processes. You might have thought, I don't have any processes. I just do it. I just get up and I go fix the cars that I need to work on that day. Or I just go clean the houses. I don't have a system. But the truth is you do. It's just not been intentional. You may just pick up your your shirts and, and, and pants and take them to the market to resell. You still have a system. You have a method. You have a process. You probably have a pattern. I, I like to study to find where patterns are with people. I like to observe patterns. I like to find them because if I can find your habits, I can determine your success or failure and when and how in most cases you're going to succeed or fail. Because habits, your daily routine, they say that success or, and failure can both be found in your daily routine. Well, that's your system. Success or failure is found in your system. It's the food you eat every day, or it's the, it's the, uh, the habits. Maybe you're on your phone too much and you're watching too much TV and you just gab and talk and you don't work, uh, or you're not thinking, uh, you're not giving time to your business. Uh, you're, you're distracted or you're consumed by doubt or by fear, whatever the issue, there are daily habits. There's habits of thought. Can you imagine that? Have you thought about that? Most people only think of habits as in the good or bad things that you do, but there's also habits of thought. There are thinking patterns. Like every time this happens, this is how you respond. Every time somebody pushes you, you push back. Every time somebody says this to you, you snap back. Every time your spouse or, your, uh, uh, or, or those that you're in relationship with or your children say certain things, you know you all have roles because you all are parts of a family system. So if, if uncle so-and-so says this, you know what you're going to say back because you know what your role is in the family. You know what your part is in that system. Tribes, every tribe has a system, don't they? There's a pecking order to that system. You know your place in that system. When you go back to the village, uh, uh, maybe on the weekends or what have you, or family holidays, uh, you know what, that, what your role is, what your part is in that system. And Kingdom Entrepreneur, what I'm telling you is to be intentional about creating your system. It doesn't matter to me if you're the only person in your business. It may only be you today. And I want you to create, be intentional, about creating your system, okay? I want you to think through what the processes should be. I want you to think like this. If, if your job, if your business is taking clothes to the market to sell today, to, to, a, to the corner, um, then I want you to be thinking like this. If it was not me, if I had to pay somebody, if I was gonna pay somebody to go do this for me today, what would I tell them to do? And you write that out, step one, Go to the warehouse, go to the house to pick up the inventory. Step two, count the inventory to make sure it's the same inventory that was there last night so that there's no theft, right? Uh, step three, you package it uh, in a way that it doesn't get dirty, muddy, wet, in case it's raining on your way to market. Then step four, you carry it like this because if you carry it this other way, it's going to get wrinkled and then no one will want to buy. Step six, step seven, step eight, step nine, step 10. You have a process. Document the process. Document the system. Okay? That's the best way to formulate processes, the right processes and systems. Then when you and I talk about how to grow your business or what's not working in your business or why your business is not growing and why you need to make more money, then I can, I can look at your processes. I can look at that and immediately be able to tell if we tweak this part of the process, you're going to make a lot more money. You're going to be a whole lot more successful. Your business is going to grow and you're going to make more money and do less work because we fix the system. All right. So with that, I want to, uh, uh, I appreciate 
the comments. Uh, yes, and uh, those who are following and have enjoyed uh, today's lesson. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up for those who have raised their hand. Uh, and I want you to, we're going to unmute you. And then we're also going to ask you to start your video. All right, so uh, uh, Fidelia, uh, let's start with you. And if you would kindly uh, unmute and start your video uh, because you have your hand up and we'll, we'll start there. I want you to tell me about your business. Fidelia, we'll give you one more moment and then we're going to move to Cynthia and then Lucian. Okay, we'll go ahead and go with uh, Cynthia. Give me one moment. Let's take uh, uh, greetings. Uh, I have a question. For me, I want to ask uh, about, I, for me, I wanted to start, to start a, a business that is selling second hand cloth. As I, as I started this meeting, I had told you about starting a business of second hand cloth. So uh, according to my business with the open, uh, open system and close system, how can it come about? How can it range to the open the close yeah. system? Yeah. Then I have another question for last week. Uh, you had said that you will have to give us the link of a business women of Africa. I I tried to to look at your 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 links, but I, I did not get the the link. And then you had said that you'll have to share with us the WhatsApp group. How yes. how did it go about it? Yeah, thank you for that question, uh, Cynthia Adisa. Uh, and, and what's, uh, so first on the fearless women of Africa, I did want to give a shout out to the ladies who joined that last Thursday. Uh, many of you did, and we got great feedback and I, from you. I remember, I think, uh, I saw a message that Pamela might have given a, a status update, uh, that she attended and that it was very, very good and encouraging and a great thing. So, uh, if you go to myrollincollege.com, uh, you will see events, a tab at the top that says events. And if you click on that, Fearless Women of Africa is one of those events. Uh, so is the Courageous Men of Africa. So there's one that's just for men, and there's one uh, mentorship, spiritual mentorship that's just for ladies. And so you can go there, and it's got the link and the date, the times. So for the women, it's every Thursday at... Um, 9 p.m. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think it's every Thursday at 9 p.m. East Africa time. Uh, and then yeah. uh, for the men, courageous men, it's uh, the last Monday of every month at 8 p.m. East Africa time. Uh, and, and for the men, just so you know, we held a big rally, men's rally, last uh, uh, August in Nairobi. And we had 5,000 men uh, participate. Uh, some drove se uh, several hours to be there for that event. And uh, so we're, we're very thankful for those two programs uh, on the continent and, and, and the, the leadership that, that kind of drove that. We're very thankful uh, for, for them and for each of you. But hopefully that will help you because if you go to that event, it has the link right there. And all you have to do is join that, click that link um, every Thursday at 9 p.m. East Africa time. And uh, that is led by uh, Mrs. Lynn, Lynn, L-Y-N-N, Benway, Lynn Benway, a uh, dear friend. And uh, she and I actually spoke uh, a week ago Friday on the phone and uh, just, a, just a sweet lady. Okay, let me answer your other question uh, on the closed system and open system as it relates to starting a secondhand store to take to market uh, clothing. So here's, what, here's how I want to apply that to your specific circumstance. I want you to think about how you acquire the clothes, like where, you're, where you source them from, how you get your clothes, secondhand clothes. 
uh, and how you clean them and how you get them ready to present at market, that needs to be a closed system. Okay, so think about that as your operations. Your operations is your closed system. But then once you get to the market, now you're part of the open system. And so your closed system has to play well with that. Okay, so the open system is something like, um, this is what time we, we have our stuff needs to be set out every day by this time. Okay, that's the start of the open system. And then part of the system is going to be, you need to display the clothes like this. And that's whatever way you find that's best, that people can see it, that they, it showcases the best part of the clothes. Or maybe you end up having somebody that, that wears it or models it, demonstrates it, whatever. The, so all of that's part of the marketing, but that's part of the open system. And so, so Cynthia Adisa, I want you to think, uh, uh, Madam, how how your products, your clothes will then interact with this open system. What do I need to do in order to sell my products to this open system? What will catch the eye and attention of the people passing by, of my potential customers, my potential clients? Whatever the answer is to that becomes your process and your system. I'm gonna give one other example. It doesn't specifically relate to you, but it will with, with many other people to ex explain this further. In that open system, a lot of times businesses, maybe in skincare or food or agriculture, or if you're a cook, uh, one of the great ways to get new customers in an open system, the open system part of your business, is to give samples. So if you make brownies or cookies, for example, I use cookies, uh, then sometimes you may take one cookie and break it up into pieces and let people just sample that as they're going by. A lot of Asian restaurants in the United States, that has been their sole marketing strategy. And I confess, there's many times that I've taken the sample and that was just fine. I just, I didn't buy anything. I enjoyed it and it went along my way. But there's also been several times where I took a bite and I thought, you know, that's just really good. I'm going to just go ahead and order some. And I bought their, their the, the, the meat that they were sampling. And so sampling is part, that's a way that that business was interacting with this open system. I might've been going to do something else, but because they're catching me as I pass by, try this. They'll offer my wife skincare things. Here, put this on your face, you know, try this. Oh, no wrinkles. Yeah, she doesn't have any wrinkles anyway, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, just here, try this. And they try to get you to do things. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's how, that those businesses interact with an open system. So I'm giving you those ideas because you're gonna to have to decide what, what is the right process for you to interact with your open system. But I can tell you, the right answer for you is different than the right person in Kakamega. It's, the, it's a different answer for somebody that's in Kusumu. It's a different per answer for someone selling on this corner versus that corner or in this marketplace versus another marketplace. That, that system and that process may look a little different. Uh, but what you want to do in the best system, and I'm not saying you can get there, but the best system is one that will work in all of those places, just like McDonald's, where it can work in the United States or it can work in Beijing, China. OK, either one. So uh, anyway, uh, we uh, the, it can it can do either one. So that's the that's the uh, the solution there. Thank you for your question, Cynthia Disa. We appreciate so, you. Yes, please, please, please. For one one minute. So you, we, you mean that open system is like saying that is an open air market where you take your things and sell them? Uh, I think, can, can you repeat that? You're saying an open system is where you take it to market and sell it? No, I'm saying that if you, if you say that open systems, is it like uh, saying that is an open air market where you take your things and sell them? <clears throat> open air market no 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 i appreciate you clarifying that no i don't mean an open air market um an open oh. system i'm not referring yeah. to i'm when i say open system i'm not referring to like it literally being open uh, uh. i'm referring to go back to the family you have a family yes yes okay um yeah, yeah. now we, we, we respect each other, you and I, 
but I'm not a member of your family. Yes, right? yes. Okay, yeah. so that means your family is a closed system. System, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, a part yeah. of your system. Okay, yes. now an open system would be if you said, anybody who wants to can be a member of my family. <laughs> so then <laughs> your family system would be an open system. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean your front door is open or there's no roof uh, on your house. It just means the concept of family is closed or open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm referring to with systems thinking. Yes, very good. Thank All you right. again. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, all right. Now, oh, I see uh, Fidelia. You are uh, your video is on. So let's go ahead and and get you. On here, if you kindly unmute, I. Caribou. Uh, my question is, if you want to, huh, does a business plan, <sighs> having a business plan, does it mean you'll have a success at the long, at the, at the long run? Very good question, uh, Fidelia. Very good question. I appreciate that. <laughs> And um, I'm going to uh, answer the, I'm, I'm going to answer that in this way. Uh, having a business plan helps, but it does not guarantee success in the short or long term. And I really appreciate this question because I needed to explain this to the class. A business plan, a good business plan is going to be outdated next week. So the moment you think you're done, it probably has to be done again and again and again because conditions change so rapidly. Uh, places that are open close and this place opens and closes and people buy and sell different things. And so or what they bought last year is out of date this year. So having a business plan that goes out three years or five years is silly because you have no idea what's going to happen in three years or five years. You don't know what's going to happen next month. Think about COVID. Think about lockdowns. Think about how much that has changed, how people eat, uh, where, where they go, how they work. It's changed a lot of things in the world. It's reordered many things in the world. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. It's just what it is. So but the best, but it doesn't mean you do not have a business plan, even though you know your business a year from now won't look much like it, most likely. Because businesses have to be flexible and adapt to changing conditions, see? So, but the benefit of starting with a business plan is it forces you to think through the business all the way. That's the value of a business plan is not the information on the paper. It's that you actually are forced to, to really confront every aspect of your business because most entrepreneurs are not good at doing that. They think, well, I'm just going to make this product and I'm going to take it to the market and I'm going to sell it. End of story. Well, uh, that's not a very good plan because that might work for today. It might work for a month but you're gonna be hungry in six months because you're not always gonna be able to do this. Uh, there's a better way, there's a better plan. So a better path. So business plans are valuable to do, but they don't guarantee success. And I do encourage you to keep your business plan up to date, probably about once a year, because you can't, if, if not, you never stop working on it. Because if, you, if we said, let's work on the business plan for one month, well, guess what, a month from now, all of you will have different ideas about your business. So what are you going to do? Spend another month uh, redoing your business plan? Well, a month from then, it's going to change again. So uh, it's almost like this endless journey. And guess what? This is the true kingdom entrepreneur right here. How much money do you make from doing a business plan? Right? People don't pay you for your business plan. Customers aren't going to walk by and go, that's a beautiful business plan. I'd like to buy this product that does not exist yet, right? They don't do that. They don't, they don't uh, buy your products because you have it in your head or a plan. 
So business plans don't pay you anything. Taking action is what pays you something. That's why action is so critical in business. So I say that so that, um, uh, that you'll understand that the pros of business plans, but also the caution that I would give with business plans. I'm certainly not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't count on it uh, to be successful. Uh, and, and I'll just tell you personally, you know, I, I start different ventures and I do different things, but I spend a lot of time either writing proposals, responding to proposals. I spend time, uh, I did something even last week where uh, my family and I, we brainstormed for three hours, a whiteboard with a whiteboard. And basically we drew our business plan on a whiteboard um, for, for, for a project, a program that we're doing and about to launch. We, um, and then, but I didn't stop there. Then I've spent hours building a website and developing the website. Not that that's the website I want anyone to see because it's not. We'll hire people who do it really pretty and, and that's what they do. But the benefit to me was the, the benefit for me doing that was it forced me to articulate it in, in written form. Uh, so when I was writing this out, there were times where I struggled. So I had the business plan, but whenever I came down to the website, I had to explain this in bite-sized increments so that anyone that would go to the website would be able to understand it, agree with it, and take action on it. Well, guess what? That, that forced me to develop the idea even more because I realized the holes in it. I realized, well, I've got to solve this. I've got to answer that. If somebody was just looking at this, they would be like, well, what about this and what about that? Well, I, I need to ha had not previously answered that. So I had to be able to put my business plan in a story form. Take note of that. What's more important is that you take the business plan and create your business story, your corporate story. Uh, the best stories are, let's say, let's say uh, someone did not have very many clothes growing up. And so they always used this and that. And so the reason they started their resale clothing store is because they wanted to give other people a chance at wearing fresh clothes. Uh, you know, or, or having more options to wear, or uh, maybe they cook because they didn't have much food when they were little and growing up. So there's always these different reasons, whatever the story is, for why they started the business, why they do what they do, but you're translating that business plan into a story about who you are, what you do, what you're about, and that's that's where the, the, the success comes from. So, um, I, I appreciate that question, uh, and thank you for, uh, for for attending and being on today. Most appreciative. Asante Sana. All right, let's go to uh, uh, yes. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Gerald. If you will kindly unmute, and uh, we will be getting that. And I want to get. I don't know. Uh, we will. Give us one moment here. We're going to get the link for the uh, uh, fearless the, the, for the for the courageous men. It's this the same link that I use for this. Uh, but for the fearless women, uh, we're going to to post that. Uh, I I want to to post that here. We'll post that in the comments for you. Give us one moment, and then, uh, Gerald, you'll you'll be on base here. One moment. We're still we're still with everyone. Because we are at the Capitol, I think there's a there's a extra steps that we are taking. So, uh, yes, okay. We will be able to supply that, no problem. Okay, 
Uh, Gerald, kindly go ahead and go. You are on. Uh-oh. He is still trying to unmute. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead and work on that and I'll try to catch you, catch you here in a minute. Uh, all right, let's go to um, Felina Alamande. Let's, uh, let's jump here, go ahead and unmute. Gatterboo. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do it this way. And I think I, Gerald, I'll come back to you. I think we know what needs to be done. So just hang tight here. Okay, hello. Greetings. Okay, so my question was um, on the systems in regards to my business, like I, I, I am a small home baker. So would, would the systems include things like order taking, production and packaging and delivery? Yes, you just nailed it. Uh, you just taught my lesson. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, and, and, you know, most people don't think about those things as it being a system, do they? They just think, oh, I'm going to get it from here and I'm going to get that from there. Then I'm going to do this. They don't think about it. Uh, but you just mentioned the different parts to your system. So now the question becomes uh, focusing on each part and then making sure all those parts work together. So let's say that you currently are doing all of those things, but that your product is too expensive. Let's say people say it's too expensive, I can't afford. Okay, well, you may not need to change it. You may just say, well, you're not my, tar you're not my target customer. If you can't, you know, my goal is not to be able to make it affordable to everybody. But let's say that it's somebody who should have been able to afford it and can't, and you wanna make it more affordable. Then what you need to do is go back to your system and say, okay, here's my various parts. What's costing me so much money in my system? And, if, and maybe it's more than one part or maybe it's just one part. And then you can say, you know what? It's my ingredients. I'm using the highest quality ingredients. And so they cost me a lot more money than if I used ingredients that were just not as good. Uh, and so you either, you have a decision to make as a business owner. You either go with the cheaper ingredients and see if you can compensate somewhere else so that it does not, uh, the consumer cannot tell, or you end up making that part of your marketing and say, we use the, a lot of people say they use the finest ingredients, but if it's not this and this and this, then it's not the finest. They're just saying that to get you to buy it. And you might have to educate customers on your, on your process. You might have to educate them on your system. What makes my bakery the best in this region is that we do this, this, and this. And that's what people haven't understood is a lot of companies use parts of their system as their best selling point. Apple you sells their design team. That, oh, our Apple products are so beautiful and sleek and they're just, they're great and they're intuitive. And that's what people, that's what they're selling is a part of their system. Isn't that amazing? So you could take a part of your system that you do better or different. Uh, think about like a coffee. Uh, coffee houses will sometimes say, we sell Costa Rican coffee here. We, we uh, use Kenyan coffee, which by the way, I'm out of my Kenyan coffee. Uh, and it is so good. Uh, <laughs> I will stock up this summer. Uh, but 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 to all the different coffees, you know, uh, Argentina coffee or Bolivia or Belize, you know, and so they sell their product based on where it comes from. There's other uh, businesses that, that sell a part of their system as well because there is perceived value by either how they do one of the parts or, or what they're buying in one of those parts of the system, okay? So hopefully that gives you a, 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 a better idea of... Uh, uh, of, of that system, but you nailed it. You nailed your system. Uh, now what you got to do is fill it, look and evaluate each part of that. 
the acquisition, the ingredient acquisition, and the and, and the, the, the fulfillment and the process of making it, and so forth, and delivery, and 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 shelf life. Be thinking about shelf life. That's part of your system. Your shelf life may be c- cutting off. Let's say you uh, it takes you from the time you get the ingredients to the time that uh, uh, from the time you get the ingredients, they're only good for seven days or ten days. If it takes you four days to make it and get it to market, you need to be thinking about how do I get my system down to two days? How do I give my customers two extra days to consume my product or service? Then that becomes one of your selling points. You improved the system. Think about that. Isn't that neat? That's wonderful. So thank you. I hope that that answered it. Thank you. Yes, Asante. All right. Uh, let's go back to uh, Gerald, and I think we've got you this time. Let's see if we can. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Roland. Yes. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your, your 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 training, and you know, just uh, uh, putting us into this uh, kind of. Uh, education so that we can learn how to do business in the best way. Um, I run a courier company here in Kenya and uh, at the moment, uh, we are uh, still doing within Nairobi and its environs. Uh, and my wife happens to be my co-director. I had to invite her and uh, make her be my co-director so that she can help me uh, in the running the business. And uh, it was part of the, yes, it was part of uh, just ensuring that uh, the company developed certain systems so that uh, I'm not a one man show kind of uh, business uh, so that she can be helping me in admin because I myself am uh, I'm mostly in the field. But you realize that when uh, uh, we started business, uh, uh, I used to be the one doing like everything, receiving all the orders from the clients and still running the business and invoicing the clients at the end of the month and uh, 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 reminding the clients to pay, I, as in everything was myself. Now it reached a point where I invited my wife into the business to help me part of the uh, administration like invoicing and uh, mm. uh, um, billing and all that. Uh, but uh, uh, some clans who like the old clans, uh, they are at that point where they really don't like uh, or don't prefer going through the system because I, 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 one of the systems was at least the clans can be uh, placing or requesting for a rider because we have riders. Uh, I'm also a rider myself. So uh, clans request for a rider. Uh, through the office line so that uh, now the my wife who happens to be the admin uh, in the office can allocate the available uh, rider. Uh, you realize that uh, some clients will still insist on calling me and placing uh, uh, their order for a rider <laughs> yeah. and it makes me you know a little bit uh, difficult for me to coordinate uh, you know, uh, coordinating, uh, allocating a rider to a client and also still uh, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, uh, you know. So uh, how, can, how can I, for example, uh, uh, convince my clients or, you know, enable them to embrace the systems that we have in our business so that uh, it will enable the, the company to, you know, to grow? They thought uh, that is at least it will help the company to grow in that way. And then number two, um, uh, this business has been uh, in operation since 2012 uh, as a business then, but we incorporated it as a limited company in 2016. Uh, now, uh, it, it was growing steadily, but I, I, I feel or we feel that there's reached a point where it's no more growing. It's like a, at a certain level that it's no longer growing, but stagnant at a certain level. And not at a bad place, but I desire to grow. So one of the things that we thought we could uh, implement is like develop an app, uh, a courier app that can either help us to, 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 to reach uh, more people 
uh, so that they can be uh, clients can be placing orders through the app and then the systems uh, uh, the, the uh, automated system can be serving now the clients so that we can uh, like uh, uh, subscribe uh, freelancer riders uh, mm -hmm. so that they can be uh, doing the business as in uh, serving our clients online clients through the app but unfortunately now the biggest challenge that we had is that uh, uh, we got uh, a developer and this developer um, uh, started the app and uh, did it quite well but reached a point and he was taking quite a long time and uh, uh, it is a point whereby he, he he just stopped working on it and started demanding uh, more more uh, more payment or maybe to review uh, uh, what we had agreed yeah the uh, you know because of he had agreed to finish the app in about six months but now it has taken like three years and now uh, he's demanding that uh, <laughs> he's demanding that uh, uh, we review the agreement uh, because of the inflation and all that yet it was his mistake delaying the 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 the, 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 the delivery of the app and the you know uh, in, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Now I've, I've told him, I talked to him last week, Monday. And uh, when he uh, told me that, I was like, okay, give me some days. I just think over it. And then I come back to, 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 to you because I'm not now, I'm, I'm not sure. Or I don't know whether to still pursue him to finish the, the, the app or whether to abandon it altogether and look for someone else. Uh, now, this uh, uh, developer is not from Kenya. Yeah, I got him online from Pakistan because here in Kenya, it is very expensive to develop such a kind of an app. I uh, looked around and uh, the cost that I was being given was a bit on the higher side. So that's why now I ended up uh, finding him on uh, Fiverr. I, I believe you know Fiverr. And mm -hmm. so we agreed and everything. And that's where now, uh, where I am right now. So I'm kind of now stagnant with the app. Uh, I don't know whether I should continue pursuing him or look for an, uh, another person altogether. It was almost like uh, uh, 75 to 80 percent done, uh, but now he's reached a point where he needs now to review agreement in terms of main payment before he can continue uh, or finish the the, the app. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, I appreciate uh, the scenario and the questions. Um, I might start in reverse and answer the second question first. Um, developers are good at holding entrepreneurs hostage. Um, I think one of the greatest lessons I ever learned about that is to pay per project, not per hour. Um, I want to, and now it's, it's kind of a chicken and egg issue because a lot of the developers will only do it by hour because they say, I don't know how long it's going to take until I get in and do it. Uh, and then, of course, my response is that's because you must not be a very good developer. A good developer would look at this project and know exactly how long it's going to take to complete it. Uh, now, the only time that does not apply is if it is if I'm trying to build custom software, if I'm trying to build something really custom. But what you described is not custom. Uber has been doing this for cars you know, forever, right? Decade uh, plus. plus. Um, you've got a number of, of, of products that, that use geolocation uh, to, to connect them with clients or customers. Uh, so, so that's an old technology. Uh, you know, we're used to that now. So th this should not be a very difficult app to, to build. He's just, uh, you know, that, that developer is just holding you hostage. So I would say that um, you may need to look, look at other solutions and, and you may not even have to buy a have it built. Look at um, apps that might be able to, uh, you might be able to use their platform, uh, location sharing apps uh, where you can integrate it, where maybe it's even on your website or something uh, where they can just place the order online and it automatically connect to the nearest courier. Uh, because you have location tracking on each of your couriers, even though they may be uh, here, we call them 1099, but like independent contractors, you know, uh, that you have doing it. Uh, you're taking a, a fee for 
getting the business for them, getting clients for them, and then they get the rest, you know, so you manage that side of it. But I would look into a different solution entirely. I don't know that I would start all over and try and do it again because so many companies, uh, a friend of mine was actually, uh, has done this with attorneys. He's done it to where like, if you get in an auto accident or something like that, you, you open up his app uh, and it shows you the nearest attorney, like literally geographically, whoever's logged in and you can get an attorney who might come right there on site and just say, you know, who, who's able to take your case. Uh, or if you need an attorney that's close to you for domestic or for business matters, um, but you've got to decide if you're going to, to move forward or not. Uh, a lot of people do uh, a lot of developers out of India, a lot of developers in different you know, countries. And um, uh, most of the ones here in the U.S. that people use are in India or in South America, but primarily even India. So uh, and, and it's a hit or miss. And Fiverr is hit or miss. I mean, it's going to either really work or it's going to be a waste of money. Um, the other thing I would also say is to, if you told you did say that these 75, 80 percent of the way done, um, depending on what that means, uh, I uploaded several things this past week that uh, for coding. And the reason I bring that up is because some of the examples were based on it, it gave if you were trying to do this or that. Then, then, then this is the, the coding language you need to learn. Uh, and I have another one that I'm going to upload uh, uh, in a bit. One, and it's the best websites to learn coding based on what you're, uh, to, uh, but and they're all free. Most of them, I think, are all, or all of them are free websites. Uh, and one of them is a place to even showcase different projects uh, that you've done. Uh, so freecodecamp.org, stackoverflow.com, dev.to, scrimba.com, geeksforgeeks.org. That has a lot of tutorials, blogs, interview questions, test prep, tips. Uh, but the free codecamp.org is the best for beginners learning to code. Um, and there's a lot of coding things that uh, it'll tell you, like if you're trying to create a chat box, if you are trying to create um, uh, a facial recognition programs, it tells you, shows you, uh, you know, which one of those to do. And that one actually may already be, be uploaded. So uh, check those out, the graphics that, uh, that have been uploaded on the coding. And uh, you may find that it, it, uh, it may be something that you're able to Google to learn how to finish coding the rest of what, um, of what is left undone, depending on, but you need to know which language, which coding language he used uh, to do it, and then you try to finish it from there. Okay, so that's that's my response. But uh, and then if that doesn't work, then I would absolutely try to uh, I would try to find a different service entirely instead of trying to take another gamble uh, through Fiverr. I would try to find a service that already well, you know you may have to pay you know twenty USD a month or whatever to integrate it into your website or business, but most everything. You uh, most people try to build and it's a lot cheaper to rent. Uh, and the other reason why that's good is because I promise you a year from now, your customers aren't even going to want to do it that way. It's going to be something else. And that may be the key. This may be forcing you to leapfrog your current competition that can do that mobile ordering and find a find even a more convenient way, a faster way, an easier way for them to order with you. Um, and it may be to where the app is, is even more cumbersome. There are text to order programs where you text the word courier uh, or package or whatever word you designate to 24837 and boom, you just got the order. You know, that text to order uh, all the, is very popular in the United States. We have text banking, obviously, and same thing in Africa. But to where I can uh, withdraw money, transfer money, deposit money, you know, uh, or move money from one account to another with texting, uh, text messages. So there may be other ways that uh, might be less expensive. So so evaluate that before you really invest uh, in starting over from scratch. Because here's the other thing about developers is no developer likes to take a, another developer's work that's halfway and then finish it. 
No developer likes to do that because even if it's, let's say it's Python or C plus or C plus uh, plus or HTML5 or whatever the coding language is, they all have their own way of writing it. You know, it's kind of like uh, English or Swahili. We all can speak whatever the language is that we speak. But if we all had to write an essay on today's class, we all heard the same thing. We might speak the same language, but it's going to look totally different because of how we all write. Our styles of writing are different. Same thing with coders. Their style of writing is different. So if you, it'd be like you handing me your essay and then me having to make it my work, but it has your tone to it. It, it, it wouldn't work. It would sound, it wouldn't work the way it's supposed to work. So there's that as a aspect of it too, where it doesn't matter how much is done. That's why they can hold you hostage because they know no, nobody else will finish it for you. <laughs> So, so you either do keep paying or you find another solution. And I'm kind of of the opinion, find another solution. And let me tell you why, friend. Because what happens whenever something breaks on it? You're going to go back to him? No, he's going to keep charging you to fix every little thing on that, even after it's done. I wouldn't do it. I don't think it's a good, I think it's a, that'll be a weak link in your system if you do. So let me go to the first question. The first question, uh, how to get people you've been growing how do you get them to change in, in, in order through the systems that you've established? Uh, here's the here's the great thing about it. That is natural. That's normal uh, for them to want to, you know, continue ordering with what's familiar to them. I think every entrepreneur goes through that. On one hand, it's a compliment. On the other hand, it doesn't. It's not sustainable. Um, but since it's been several years and they're still not following the system. Uh, there are several ways that you could do it. Number one, you may actually even need to forward your number to your wife's phone or to the business phone so, so that you don't even take the calls, period. You get a new number altogether. Uh, that's one option because the moment that number doesn't work for that, they will find a way to get to you. The second thing, uh, especially if you've already told them, uh, or the other thing is every time they call, don't do it for them. Right. You can't say now this is the last time I'm going to do this uh, or, or, I, or you know, I'm going to do this, but this will be the last time. But you can't say that every time. If you say this is the last time, it has to be the last time. But uh, and you say, you know, uh, or the other thing is to always be busy. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot. We have we have a number designated to take you orders. Would you please program this in your phone and call this number? Uh, and because I want you to have good service. Why do you want them to do that? It's so that they can have good service. They're not gonna have good service with you. If I might be the CEO, but if I take your order, I'm gonna mess it up. Do it online, call the 800 number, call this, because if I take it, I'm gonna mess it up. And we want, don't wanna mess up our customer's experience. So please do it this way so that we can treat you with respect and your package and every and you have a seamless customer experience so a lot of it might be education and helping them understand why uh you want it done this way but as long as they think hey i can just call gerald i'll get it done right now this is what we just got him on speed dial and it's he and i are buddies i can just text him and we'll just get this done um uh, i think i would let him i would let them know uh you know we've 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 done this but it is it's uh, things are falling through the cracks if i do this and i don't want you to have a bad experience i don't want anything to hurt our relationship and so please do this. And, and, and I even say to some people, I would love to do what you're asking me to do. I just can't do it and make sure that you get what you need. Uh, it's got to go through our processes because our systems are bigger than me. I've created systems that don't depend on me, which means if you do depend on me, I'm actually, the, the system is likely to break and you're not going to get what you need because you tried to go outside of the system that we created. Okay, every blessing to you. I hope that that helps. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay, I'm taking one last one. One last one. Let's go. Uh, Alice uh, Gimbo. I, let's see here. Uh, maybe I think. I'm uh, Elenio, I'm going to try to get to you here and here and maybe we'll do one more. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'm having difficulty hearing you, Alice. 
I don't. Is it? Is it? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I need to sort of this. I once started my business in 2014. Uh, whereby I did not. Then my business had been established well in West Pokot. And 15, I had to move to Kakamega. Hiring some. Uh, so while I was in Kakamega. Alice, let me, so, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to, to interrupt. I We're really struggling to make out the clarity. So would you... Uh, uh, write a status on your profile, my, on your business profile at myrollincollege.com, and I'll get to it uh, by tomorrow, okay? And I'll go on and answer it. So if you'll write out your question in your status update at myrollincollege.com, um, and I'm going to be looking for yours, okay? So write out what your question is, um, and then that way I can, because I think the network is probably not good at the moment. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, and it's great to see you. Great to see you. Okay, uh, hang on one moment. Actually, uh, I, I apologize. I did this. Okay, uh, Alenio, excuse me, Alenio, uh, you uh, are. Alenio. 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 Yes. Uh, hello. Yes, Kerubu. Okay, my question is that I just wanted to know if uh, by the end of the teachings or the the, the, the teachings on the on the uh, on 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 the this program entrepreneurship for this program. Uh, that, that, great question. Uh, if you would kindly direct that to the leaders uh, in the uh, that, that, that are overseeing that, uh, uh, that would be uh, uh, Sammy and Bishop Evans and, and uh, uh, Isaac Wawiri. They will be able to give guidance on that specific uh, aspect of it. What I can tell you uh, is that my goal is that no one in this class wants or needs a business loan at the end of Roland College. And it, near the end, it, one of the lessons that I give you is on funding your business. And I'm gonna go through a number of different scenarios. My goal is to make you so successful and that your business is making so much money that you're like, why in the world would I even take a loan just to pay interest and pay more money back? Now, there are times when that may be called for and that may help and support, especially if you have a large capital expenditure. But even then, if you had a large capital expenditure, such as equipment, um, is it? <clears throat> here's the question for you. Is it better to take $100,000 and buy a piece of equipment or is it better to buy that same piece of equipment that is used for $10,000 and uh, do without it for a few years and save up the same amount of money you would have had to pay to that loan at 100,000 uh, uh, save that amount each month and be able to pay in, pay for it uh, for 10,000 all up front for a used machine. You will find nine times out of 10, it's much smarter and a lot less stressful on your business if you will buy the used machine. The problem is the loans that they give you for equipment, they require you in most cases to buy their new machine. But that's a bad financial decision in a business. So why would you do that? Especially startups, my goodness, that's, that's very unwise. And that's the kindest word I can think to say. Uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, un unkind ones, but it's just not smart. It's not good business. So my goal is to help each rolling college student build a successful business this year so that uh, at the end of this course, you know, maybe they'll take it, maybe they won't, but they don't have to. Uh, so anyway, but, uh, so that's my, my short answer on that, but certainly, uh, uh Sammy in the, uh, he leads, uh, you know, he's, uh, leading a lot of the communication for us on the WhatsApp and other leaders there, uh, will be able to answer that, uh, specific question for you. Uh, uh, Bishop Evans, uh, and Bishop, uh, uh Wawiri 
uh, we'll be able to address that. Okay, very good. I want to thank you for that question. Thank you, sir. Uh, and, and, and every blessing to you. Certainly want to learn more about your business uh, in the coming days.